So I want you to look at a couple of verses and then we'll, we'll tie this up and then we'll go deeper. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and I want you to look at verse number 20. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Or you can probably just watch the screen because it'll be up there in 5, 4, 3, 2. <laughs> I, to I told you they're, they're good here. <laughs> it says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of them that slept. See, now all of this makes sense when you understand that Jesus coming from the dead, being the firstborn from the dead, you now understand that. Matter of fact, go to Colossians chapter number one, verse number 18, and it'll be up there. Colossians 1, 18. It says, and he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. See, the reason Paul said we've got to have this revelation is because it was the resurrection from the dead that gave Jesus the preeminence over everything. And it was because he alone paid the price for spiritual death. And when God resurrected him, he says, now all belongs to you. Why? Because he was the first spirit raised from the dead. But then we found out last night, the only reason he did that is so that he could raise your spirit from the dead. I want you to go to John chapter number three, and you're going to see something in a way you've never seen it before. And one of the, the uh, I, I think uh, Tricia or somebody prophesied it here just a, a little bit ago, how God was going to teach us how to walk in this. Somebody said it. It might have been one of the worship leaders. My God, they were just amazing. John chapter number three, Nicodemus, who is a Pharisee, who, who can never let it be known that he was out there talking to Jesus. That's why he had to come by night. He was so mesmerized at watching Jesus until he said, nobody can do what you do except you come from God. I have to admit it. Nicodemus said, I can't endorse your ministry. My brethren can never know I'm out here talking to you. But what is it about you? We know you come from God. Nobody can do the things you do except God be with you. Nicodemus is saying, what? What, 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 what are you? What, who are you? And then Jesus takes him out to the deep end of the pool and just drops him in the water and he says verily verily I say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom he's saying Nicodemus you cannot understand me because you are not in a spiritual dimension you don't have capacity to understand me yet because you are not born again. Until you are born again, there are certain things you can't even see, you can't even perceive, you can't even receive. There are certain things you cannot even get revelation of. And then Nicodemus says, now wait a minute, you're messing with my head. He, he says, how can one be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And then Jesus, going to the next verse, Jesus said, Nick, Nick, Nick. 
he, he, says, he says, I'm not talking about a natural birth. Except the man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. Woo. Next verse, he says, for that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. What Jesus came to bring is a rebirth of your spirit. This is what I wish they would have told me 40 years ago. That to be born again is literally the resurrection of my spirit. That my spirit man literally was born again. It was revived. It was resurrected. And Jesus paid the price for that. For the resurrection of your spirit. Now that you understand this dimension. I want, I want to take you deeper into something. And then we'll... See where it goes. So now, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Oh, no. If you read the Apostle Paul's teachings, you will read scriptures where he talks to himself about himself as if he is not himself. In other words, he talks to himself like they are different parts of him. He talks to himself like he's a spirit being. And then he talks to himself like he has a body. Then he talks to himself like his mind is subjected to his spirit. Why does Paul have this revelation? Because in Galatians, I always say this, when I get to heaven, there are three people I want to see. There are three people I want to see. The first person I'm going to run up to when I get to heaven, it ain't Jesus. Jesus number two. I'm going to Adam. <laughs> it's just a joke for those that are watching. It's just, it's just a joke. I'm going to be, how could you? Over a fruit? You lost the glory of God over a pear? Or a peach, or a plum, or apple, a fig. How could you fall for that? Then I'm going to go to Jesus, and I'm going to bow down at his feet and tell him thank you. And then I'm going to go hang out with Paul. <laughs> when we all get to heaven, it's just going to be me and Paul. Hanging out in a corner somewhere just talking all the time. You're going to be trying to get to him and I'm going to be, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> because Paul, Paul said in Galatians chapter number one. Matter of fact, uh, since y'all are so good with the screens, just, just put Galatians chapter number one up on the screen. And I want you, I want you to look at, at verse number, ah, uh, yes, look at verse number 11, Galatians 1, 11, 12. I, oh, I've been sharing this message. I preached it about five or six times, and I always have to go here because Paul says, I certify to you, brethren, that the gospel which I preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Paul says, brethren, what you've heard me preach, I didn't get it from man. I wasn't taught it by man. But Paul later on goes down to say, but when it pleased God who called me from my mother's womb to reveal his son in me, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Paul says, these things that I'm telling you about Christ, about the resurrection, about these things about redemption, he says, nobody taught that to me. He says, I didn't get that from the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. I got all of that by revelation. Oh, my God. This is why Paul says, I got so much revelation. There were things that, that I couldn't even talk about. He says in Corinthians, I mean, I, I mean, good. And I was caught up and I was in the third heavens, second heavens. Uh, I, there were things I couldn't even utter. He said, God opened up my spirit and showed me so much stuff I can't even talk about. And Paul says he did it all by just download. He says, I didn't learn it. I didn't go to school for it. I was persecuting the church. I couldn't stand the church. I held the coats of those that stoned Stephen. But on my way to Damascus, he knocked me off my beast. And then set me aside to give me a revelation that even Peter, James, and John didn't know. 